What's going on guys? Hopefully you've all been well. Here we've got a brand new 2023 Ford Ranger Raptor. On this vehicle today, we installed these two light bars that sit behind the original grill and give out not only an amazing output of light, but there's no need to actually drill anything. There's no need to cut into anything. It's absolutely stealthy, absolutely flush, probably the best upgrade to keep things very minimal and give you extra light. Check out guys at night time, a video of these light bars in action. When they're on and when they're off, it's such a massive difference, hey? We've got some still images showing just the low beams and then now showing with the high beams. Night and day the difference and you can really see down the road. Okay guys, now since we noticed there was so much interest in this upgrade for this specific model Ranger, we got the permission of the owner of this vehicle to video as many steps of the way to create this overview video to outline some of the steps involved with this installation. As always, we'd like to welcome anyone that's new to this channel and say hey to everyone that's coming back. So we got our hands on this model specific installation kit for this 2023 Ford Ranger Raptor. What that meant was that we didn't need to make any holes or any modifications to the actual vehicle in the actual installation of the light bars. Now, first things first, we've got to remove a bunch of these plastic screwable clips. So you'll find there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them that you've got to remove. Now you will find that with a Phillips headed screwdriver, you're able to remove the screw that's on the inside shaft. And once you get most of the way out, you're able to pull the lot out. Sometimes you'll find they're a little bit stubborn, but with a little bit of patience, you can get them out and start to peel up and out this plastic cowling here. This far left corner is a little tricky. I managed to find later in experience that you can actually remove that little rubber surround at the air intake to allow this plastic to come out more easily. But once you've got it removed, put it aside somewhere safe and let's continue on. Okay guys, now Ford very conveniently have given us the positive and negative feed for the high beams. So we'll come back to these later for the installation. But for now, before we remove the front grill, we need to disconnect this hose, that's the washer hose for the front camera. And this here is the actual front camera cable itself. Now this camera cable is secured with these little retaining clips. So you just gotta lift these up and out. They're very firm, it took me quite a while to remove them. But with these two removed, there's a little plastic tab that will disengage the camera cable and you're able to disconnect it there. Now for the washer hose, there's two little sections on this female end of the hose that you're able to squeeze inward and with a bit of pressure, then the male and female parts of this hose disconnect. And it's also held in here by this little Christmas tree style clip. So you can remove that washer hose from its place and now that means the front grill and the camera and the camera washer hose is disconnected from the car and you're able to continue to the next stages of disconnecting and removing the front grill. Tuck those cables out the way. Um, there's a bit of water that'll, <laughs> that'll empty, so just be mindful of that. But there's two bolts that are holding the grill on at the top. There's one here and one here, and they're both eight millimeter bolts. Okay, now with the top two bolts removed, we can draw attention to this trim piece that's covering the bottom bolts. Now I used a plastic trim removal tool there to begin popping out the clips that are holding on this trim piece here. So be very careful and very gentle in removing this trim. You want to perhaps keep using your plastic trim removal tools as you go, but here I did find I was able to, just by hand, pop out these clips very gently and very carefully. Now, if you can, do it with two hands, obviously. <laughs> Don't be holding a camera as you go. But I managed to find it didn't put up too much of a fight and I was able to remove this trim piece pretty easily. And you'll see all the way along, there are all these plastic tabs that are holding this trim piece in place. So put that somewhere safe and you're able to remove a few more eight millimeter bolts. There's three down the bottom. So one on the far left, one in the middle and one on the far right. With these removed, what you can now do is just pull on the grill on the left 
and disconnect the grill from the left. And you can then do the same on the right. So you'll see it all just pops out of place very easily. And again, you wanna do this with two hands, it'll be a little bit easier, but I did manage to find uh, gripping from inside the grill. I was able to give a little bit of a tug and then pop the actual trim, uh, you would say disconnects from its home location. So once you've removed both halves, this side just popped back, so I'll just disconnect it again. Again, with the camera cable disconnected and your washer hose disconnected, you're able to remove the grill and get access to start mounting the actual light bars themselves. Okay, now the kit was really, really well designed in utilizing the original bolt and clip on the right and also on the left for parts of the brackets of the new light bars. So what you want to do, jump to the 10 millimeter here, is remove the bolt and the clip that's on both of these locations. And then you'll be utilizing that same bolt and clip on each side for the new light bar mounts. With the flathead, you'll be able to pop up the inner section of these clips, remove that insert, and sometimes you'll get lucky and that bottom section of the um, little clip comes out with it. Here I found one-handed and slightly injured. <laughs> I wasn't able to remove that with one hand, but sometimes you'll get lucky and these center points and the base comes out all in one. So that's great. Keep these and what you'll do is you'll be able to reuse them as mentioned to install the side brackets for the light bar. And this is what we mean about how this kit was very well designed in utilizing all of these factory points that you weren't needing to modify the car to fit the brackets themselves. So that's great, absolute massive tick in our books. So go ahead, install the clip and bolt on the far left and the far right. And then we can bring our attention to the middle bracket for the inner support of the light bar. Okay guys, so once you've tightened down your bolt on the far right and the bolt on the far left, we can then bring our attention to the hardware that's needed to bolt down the center mount. Now the hardware that's required is included in the kit. With a bit of patience, you're able to put in the bolt from the top and then put in the nut from underneath and access and hold that nut from behind this little support here. It was very tight, it was very tricky and took quite a while, a lot of swearing, <laughs> a lot of sweating, but we did get there in the end. Just take your time and you'll get there. The actual light bars themselves, they're included of course with the mounting hardware and they just bolt and thread straight in, which is nice and easy, it's such a breeze. They even include for you guys an Allen key that's uh, required for tightening down these bolts. So no need to go and buy one, absolutely amazing. Okay, so once you've got both your light bars bolted in place, you'll find in the wiring kit supplied a wiring extension loom that then takes the two light bars and connects them into one. From there, we can see the rest of the wiring harness that's got relay, switches, everything included. Okay, so what we wanna connect next is this feed wire that needs to get tapped in to Ford's conveniently placed high beam signal wires. So here, you'll see we've already gone and connected that feed wire here. The red positive gets connected to Ford's solid yellow cable. That's the positive of the high beam. We've joined these cables using these heat shrink ended crimp terminals. So you can join two wires together and heat shrink them on, keep them nice and tidy. And then the black negative wire gets connected to Ford's yellow with the black stripe. So don't get these confused guys, solid yellow to red, and then the yellow black wire to the black. You're then able to connect this together We've used some corrugated tubing here for extra protection and extra insulation. This now gives us the high beam feed. Perfect. What we'll do next is connect the wiring from the light bars to the rest of that harness going to the relay. So here you guys will remember there were the two sets of wiring from the light bar going into one. So that then plugs into this Deutsch connector which goes to the relay. From here, you can start tucking aside all of the excess wiring and really tidying things up and making sure your routing is nice and safe, nice and neat, away from anything that's moving, anything that's hot. Um, here you'll see the beginnings of this tidying of the wiring. 
uh, making sure none of the wiring is loose, flapping around. Um, the wiring for these two light bars, we're able to utilize these factory little holes, the little um, eyelets, able to actually just cable tie the, um, the wiring here very nicely and neatly. From here, we took the wiring between this little relay box and the battery, cable tying it along the way so it's not loose, and following the original Ford wiring along this area. And we'd just like to show from this location, we just followed these factory wires underneath this section, again cable tying as we go, with the relay popping out here. There's a positive and negative coming from the relay that you can connect to the battery itself. There are these nice convenient little uh, ring terminals here that you can go through and install. Uh, we put the fuse here, and then the negative, now you've got two options for the negative. You can either connect the negative to the uh, terminal on the battery or onto this part of the chassis. We found the wiring didn't reach that chassis point, so we just bolted to this little accessory terminal area on the battery itself. So with that done, use a little switch that's included in these wiring kits. We just tape that up and we're going to cable tie that out of the way and left in the on position. Now the relay itself, we just bent this little, uh, you would say bolt down tab, we bent that into a 90 degree uh, angle, so that way we could utilize this factory hole, it was ready ready to go, <laughs> couple points here, so we're just going to use that factory hole and use a nut and bolt to secure this relay in place. So at this point, everything is actually operational, we're able to go through and test everything in just a moment. But with the relay mounted, with that extra wiring switch left in the on position and mounted, the positive and negative connected, the light bars connected at the front, and that feed wire for the high beams connected to the relay, that means our light bars are now operational. At this point, you can pat yourself on the back for a job well done. And uh, you want to go through and don't celebrate just yet. You want to make sure your light bars are symmetrical. They're not too high, not too low. You can utilize the original high beam height as a bit of a guide. And when you're happy that they're all lined up, you can then reinstall the front of the car and make it look like a car again. Just remember to reconnect that washer hose and also the camera cable and reinstall all the bolts, all the clips in the exact reverse uh, procedure of your removal. So nothing fancy. <laughs> Just one of those clips being a bit of a pain. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching, guys. Hopefully this video helped out some Ford Ranger Raptor owners out there. We're looking to do this install. If it did help you out, let us know in the comments. We always love hearing that these videos um, are helping people. You know, they always take a lot of effort, a lot of time in shooting, editing, but always worth it if it's helping someone out there. So for now, guys, again, thank you for watching. If you'd like to support this channel a little bit further, we have a mobile business called Handy Auto Care. Give us a follow on Instagram, give us a like on Facebook, that'll really help us out. Thanks again for all the support everyone. We can't wait to show you all the next video we're working on. Again, take care, catch you soon.